Hi, friends. Today we will learn about prokaryotes. So let's start. All living organisms can be sorted into one of two groups, depending on the fundamental structure of their cells. And these two groups are prokaryotes and eukaryotes. All types of cells are either eukaryotic or prokaryotic. First of all. Prokaryotes were the only form of life on the Earth for millions of years until more complicated eukaryotic cells came into being through the process of evolution. All life forms that came into being through evolution, like insects, birds, animals, fish, are made up of eukaryotic cells. Today, we will learn about prokaryotes. Organisms with prokaryotic cells. Are called prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are always unicellular organisms. Prokaryotic cells are way simpler, but they are able to perform complex functions as eukaryotic cells do. Only unicellular organisms have prokaryotic cells. Examples are bacteria, archaea, cyanobacteria, and E. coli. They may exist in different shapes, including spherical, rod, coccus, spirochete, vibrio, and some are even shapeless. Now let's learn about the structure of prokaryotes. Prokaryotic cells have a cell membrane, but they do not have any membrane-bound organelles. In other words, the space inside of the cell membrane is not compartmentalized in prokaryotes, but it is compartmentalized in the case of eukaryotes. We will study about them in our next section. DNA of prokaryotic cells lies in the central region of the cell called nucleoid, and no special membrane-bound compartment is there for DNA, or they have no nucleus. Prokaryotes are said to have a loop-like circular DNA. Typically, prokaryotic cells range from 0.1 to 5 micrometers in diameter. These are significantly smaller than eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells have diameters ranging from 10 to 100 micrometers. Flagella and pili. Prokaryotic cells may have a tail-like structure called flagella that enables them to move, swim, spin, or rotate. Some prokaryotic cells may have hair-like structures called pili that enables them to stick to surfaces and transfer DNA to other prokaryotic cells. Now, let's have a look at some examples of prokaryotes. E. coli. It is a rod-shaped bacterium commonly found in the lower intestine of warm-blooded organisms. Streptococcus bacteria. This is an infection of the back of the throat, which includes the tonsils. Streptomyces soil bacteria. These are predominantly found in soil and in decaying vegetation, with most producing spores. Archaea. They are able to survive in a very harsh environment. Now let's learn some exceptions. We know prokaryotes do not have organelles, but bacteria is a prokaryote that may have some primitive organelles. Also, cyanobacteria may form large colonies, which is a characteristic of eukaryotes. Some types of myxobacteria are also known to have multicellular stages in their life cycles. So, these were some exceptions. Now, let's learn the importance of prokaryotes in our environment. Prokaryotes are used for treating arthritis and autoimmune diseases. They are also used for making paper, treating waste, and radiation resistance. Some unicellular organisms can live in extreme environments, such as hot springs, thermal ocean vents, or polar ice, so on and so forth. They are adapted to live in places where multicellular organisms cannot survive. So, these unicellular organisms are used for treating arthritis, autoimmune diseases, making paper, 
treating waste and radiation resistance. Marine life cannot exist without prokaryotes. Phytoplanktons are prokaryotes that live in the ocean, and no food chain is complete without them. So, they are the basis of marine life on the Earth. Prokaryotes are also the major source of oxygen on the Earth. Phytoplanktons, which are prokaryotes, are present almost everywhere in our oceans. Scientists at NASA state that phytoplanktons are only responsible for up to 90% of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. Prokaryotes also allow for food processing at extremely high temperatures. Prokaryotes like pyrococcus, a species that can function in temperatures over 100 degrees Celsius, are used for food processing at extremely high temperatures, such as with whey and other dairy products. They are also key to new strains of antibiotics. Archaea bacteria are being used to make new strains of antibiotics. They will be different from the antibiotics that are used now. So friends, today we have learned about prokaryotes, which are single-celled organisms having prokaryotic cells.